All right, Iggy, victory puppies. It's a smaller one, so you're catching this one. Yeah, way to go. Hey, can you do it again, though? Yes, you can! And then there were two. Canada wins! Five to nothing over Team Russia. Look, 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 they haven't won gold yet, and if they don't win gold, it won't mean anything. But if they do, this team is truly special. It'll go in the history books. They have not been this dominant over the competition in a decade and a half. We're talking about all these blowouts and oh, we need to get rid of teams. Who, Russia? Finland? Sure, Canada has had a bunch of blowouts, but in terms of the competition, Austria is really the only team that struggled to compete. But Canada is dominating everybody. They got three shutouts with a seventh round pick. And before we get to the game highlights, let's talk about that seventh round pick for a while because I'm a bigger fan of this guy each and every day, Devin Levi. With the 13th overall pick in 2019, the Florida Panthers select Spencer Knight, who's a Team USA goalie and basically unbeatable at the college level. He's so good. The very next year, in the seventh round, 212th overall, the Panthers select Devin Levi, who will be Canada's goalie, and he's unbeatable at this level. There was a tweet from Tampa Bay Lightning forward and reigning Stanley Cup champion Alex Kalorn that I really liked, and it sparked some memories. He says, I remember shooting on a 14-year-old Devin Levi. Kid would take hundreds of shots and breakaways from NHL players after skating with his own team. He had a great attitude and competed like hell. It's no wonder he's doing so well. I couldn't even score on him then. And then he, I can't believe he has this picture, but he does. And it reminded me of a story from a few years ago when I was in Calgary for Canada's announcement of their World Junior Team back then. I was working with Nike back then, and there was someone on the trip who was working on all the Nike stuff we were working on who was a former OHL player. And before he retired as a player, he would go out and practice with other teams, like Junior B teams and stuff like that. And he had a moment where he goes, wait a sec, I recognize one of these guys from the junior B team that I skated with. And that player was none other than Tanner Pearson, who had an amazing breakout season in the OHL, made Team Canada for the World Juniors, and ended up being a first round pick of the LA Kings. Well past his first eligible draft year, might I add. And I don't remember the exact exchange, but it was something like, didn't they skate with you in junior B? What happened? And Pearson said something to the effect of, yeah, I don't know, I, I got better. I love that story. Yeah, I don't know, I got better. But even with Tanner Pearson, that's sort of the case of a late bloomer. He was at a certain level, wasn't that great, and then he worked his way up to the OHL, and he was still pretty okay, and then he breaks out. Devin Levi might be a late bloomer, or he might just be someone who scouts were completely wrong about. Unbelievable story. But now let's talk about the story of the game. Heading into this game, Alex Newhook, we don't know if he's going to play or not. That shoulder, remember I was saying that's a wonky injury. It could be serious. It could be playable. It could be serious, but playable. Well, Canada wastes no time getting him into the game. Less than a minute in, takes a shot well wide of the net, gets the puck back, roofs with the, okay, I guess we'll keep playing. Was that off the crossbar? Was that off the crossbar? And then the horn goes, and it looks like we might be calling off the last 30 seconds for what would not be the last time in this game. We'll get to that later. The horn of the hockey gods goes off. The review happens, and it turns out Newhook did roof it, and it's 1-0 Canada already within a minute against Russia. Yaroslav Askarov in net for the Russians, this first round pick from this past draft. He's supposed to be a big deal, one of the most hyped goaltending prospects since Carey Price. But you got to be a miracle worker to work with the defense that the Russians showed on this one. They got two guys behind the line. What are you doing? Poor start for the Russians, a good start for Canada. Let's see if they can get it back. Now, a few minutes later, Askarov loses his stick. Not for the first time and not for the last time in this game. On this play, Askarov loses his stick, not for the first time and not for the last time in this game, and the puck goes behind the net. Connor McMichael, I thought, sort of accidentally on purpose, sort of strided the stick further away from Askarov. Askarov's teammates made the mistake of trying to get his stick back to him, and not for the last time in this game. Canada works the puck around with Russia in shambles in front of their own net. McMichael is wide open, bangs it in, 2 nothing. Canada just like that. Now, it's not a mistake to try to get the stick back to your goaltender. That, that, that makes sense. But this was the sort of game where Askarov's teammates, after the fourth, fifth, sixth time that he did it, should have just been like, you go get it! Or play without it! We don't care! We're trying to defend Team Canada here! It's hard enough to do our own job! As evidenced by a few minutes later, Russia takes a penalty. Canada heads to the power play. Cole Perfetti with the puck basically on the face-off dot is able to just walk in. No one 
anywhere near him, and he just snipes it through Askarov. It's 3 0 like that. It makes the goals 3 0. The shots are now 13 to 4. Canada is just running Russia's show. And you can throw your blame anywhere you want. Uh, Askarov should have been able to hold on to his stick. He was a mess all game. But two of those first three goals, I thought were on the Russians' defense. The third goal is maybe one of those ones you want your goaltender to have, but I want a Lamborghini. It doesn't mean I'm gonna get it. We've been talking about this for as long as I've been doing these videos. Canada can shoot the puck. Cole Perfetti can shoot the puck. He's extremely good at what he does. Askarov is really good at what he does. It was basically a one-on-one -on -one situation. And yes, Perfetti beat Askarov in this one-on-one -on -one situation, but if you allow your goaltender to be in that situation, I think the failure was yours first. Now, I remember all too well being in Buffalo for the gold medal game against the Russians. Canada was up 3-0 heading into the third. I was sitting behind Zach Cassian's family and everything. And then Russia did something I'd never seen before. They made it 3-1, and by 3-2, they're still losing. They're taunting Canada's bench. They tie it 3-3, the building goes quiet, but it was actually like kind of, okay, don't worry, we're gonna get this. They score four, they score five. There was nothing stopping that version of Team Russia. They were monsters. Can they find a way to summon that version of Team Russia for the second and third? And the answer was straight up no. Less than five minutes into the second, and you know someone at intermission had to be barking at Askarov, hold on to your stick. He's lost his stick! And the Russians try to get his stick back to him, and they get his stick back to him, and then he flubs it, and then it's over here! And it's getting in the way, and it's this giant distraction. It's like Canada's got an extra attacker and the goalie in net. Canada throws it on net, specifically Braden Schneider. It goes in, because of course it does. Russia's in shambles. I know I sound disappointed. I, I'm not. I assure you I'm not. Oh, I kind of am. Yeah, I am. Dude, the broadcast was disappointed. Gord Miller's like, he lost his stick again. On the second goal when Askarov lost his stick, Ray Ferraro said, oh no. At this point, I, I can't help it. I'm, I want Canada to win. I, I want them to win. But I'm almost cheering for it to stay close. When it was like 3 nothing and Finland made it 3-1, I was like, all right. And this flurry, all of this started because of an amazing back check in the Canadian zone. They're able to turn it around and then it's hell on ice for Team Russia. I don't know how you prepare for Canada. And it's fascinating for Team USA and for Team Canada. How do they prepare for each other? They haven't played each other in this tournament yet. They only have hours with which to review video and also maybe have your pregame nap if you can manage to sleep. Somehow not have an adrenaline dump because your game is at 9.30. Okay, locally it's at 7.30. What I, you know what I mean. The only glimmer of hope there was for Russia to get back into this thing because they can score goals in bunches. We remembered them blowing the lead in Buffalo. What about the almost comeback in 2015 with the McDavid and Domi group? Remember that? So here they come, the Russians on the man advantage and they enter the zone and it was close but they get in. Mikhail Abramov, a Leaf prospect with a bunch of opportunities and he finally buries it, rushes on the board, and we have a review. Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Lose sight of the fact that you're a Team Canada fan, all right? Lose sight of that fact. What do you think of that call? Because Russia was ruled to be offside and the goal comes back. Now, I thought he was offside. He was offside. But should there be a limit on the amount of time you can put back in the clock? Because right now, Hypothetically, you could, on the first shift, 10 seconds in, go offside, and you could cycle the puck and have a flurry, and you just have essentially like a, a mutant in net. And he makes 30 saves, and there's no whistle for 15 minutes. And then you could review it and call the goal back because you were offside 10 seconds in. And then you gotta replay 15 minutes. What about the mutant goal you made 30 saves? Do I get to keep them? Do they go on my stats? The reason we called for offside reviews in the first place, well, Matt Duchesne, if we're being honest, it was Matt Duchesne. Which sucks for Matt Duchesne. There are plenty of things you can rightfully blame Matt Duchesne for, but all he was doing was playing to the whistles. It was the ref's fault for missing it. But we wanted offside reviews to get the call right. And I suppose, in this case, you get the call right. So what is there to complain about? Call right, call wrong, it's black and white. I get that. But there needs to be a shade of, not gray, but a shade of, come on. Like, okay, not that I would have done it on this play, because I wasn't cheering for Russia to score, but I need it to be safe for me as a hockey fan to cheer for goals again. For example, Leafs fan, I don't know if you heard, but during the season, they'll score a goal, but because I wasn't sure of the call at the blue line, I don't even celebrate. 
If, if, they, if the guy like, like blew at the goalie for a second, I don't even, because I don't know. So how do you fix this? Great question. I saw some people go, oh, put a buzzer on the bench and you gotta, I mean, every coach is gonna press the buzzer every time. Also, just the idea of a coach standing there like they're on Jeopardy, that's ridiculous. What about the one time, let's say it's a 10 second time limit. How about we review the offside call and they get it right, but then we gotta review was it 10 seconds? Because it looks like it could have been 9.9. .9. So we either keep it the way it is, constantly interrupting the game, nearly every game, or you scrap it. Scrap it all together. Because I'll tell you the way it used to work, sometimes it would go on the highlights the next morning. Oh, it was offside, and we'd go, ah. And then we continue to watch. Because 99% of the time, it was like that. It was barely an ah, oh well. And if it was offside by this much, you go, that's by a mile. And the Duchesne goal just ruined everything. And it ruined Russia's chances of getting back into this game. The third period happens, nothing happens for Russia. They had a few flurries, a few chances, but Canada was just too good. Levi was just too good. Cousins with the empty netter. Canada beats Russia 5-0 and heads to the gold medal game to play. Whew. Well, it looked like it was going to be Team USA. They were up 3-1 on Finland. And then Finland comes back, just minutes to play, 3-2, and 3-3 from who else than Roni Hirvinen, Leaf prospect. But barely any time left. The States regain the lead. They win. 4-3 over Team Finland. Finland will play Russia for bronze, and the States will play Canada for gold. Questions. Would Russia have won if they started noted Leaf draft pick Arter Aktyamov, who's the backup goalie? Haha, <laughs> no. Waves. Hi Robert, that's Robert. He puts all the captions on the videos. Good job, Robert. Devin Levi for tournament MVP? Mm-mm, you gotta win. You gotta win. I remember, didn't a few years ago Tuka Rask win goalie of the tournament, but Pogi won MVP? Mm, you gotta win. Were the ads on the helmets distracting and problematic? Can we stop complaining about ads on NHL helmets? Yeah, I don't know. I've never really cared about that. Like, the Russians had a relatively silly one. They had a big toys.ru sticker just plastered right on their forehead. And I didn't care. I, not for a minute did I care. I think it's a problem if you're in last place. Then you notice it, but uh, otherwise, no. Rodion Amirov, zone entrance, God! Yeah, I wish I saw more of Amirov and even Abramov. I, I wish that goal stood, I suppose, but like, I, I, who on Russia looked great in this game? Anybody? Slava Fatisov was beside himself. Uh, he says no single Russian player would make Team Canada at the World Juniors. Rachel Dory responded, I think I'd definitely take four Russians, Askarov, Podkolzin, uh, Kuznadinov, and Amirov. Based on his World Junior play, I'd take uh, Chistyakov as well. It's not a fair assessment by Fatisov, but I think his point on talent discrepancy this year is valid. Canada is deep. I mean, to even only take four or five, that's... That's ridiculous, man. Canada is so stacked this year. I don't even think it's a criticism of Russia. Also, whichever direction the Russians go in, they go 100%. When they win, they're puffing their chest out, and when they lose, they are beside themselves. So this quote doesn't surprise me. But they are in the past. The gold medal game is in the very immediate future. So, leave a comment in the comment box down below. What do you think is going to happen? But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. 9.30 tonight. Canada, USA for gold.